All right, friends, this one isn't so much about whether you have the ability to install and run applications on an external drive. It's a matter of whether you should. Now, of course, I don't know if we need this, but I certainly have some notes, especially on this unpopular opinion that I may have. So let's get into it. What is going on, you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And yes, today what I wanna do is actually follow up with you because I have done my share of these external drives, these external SSDs. I've got about five terabytes of capability here. I've done some crazy work on them. I've really pushed them. And I've even, on this particular one, I've done some gaming on this external drive. And of course, I will talk about that later in the video. But for those of you who have reached out to me, and of course, first off, let me preface, I do want to talk or touch on at least Windows and Linux, but primarily on Mac OS and really the M1 Mac, because for Windows and Linux, when you're looking at a machine, you likely can buy something right now that's sort of base model and then typically upgrade RAM and internal storage later. So with the Mac ecosystem though, once you, it's built, it's pretty much built. And of course, relying on an external drive, especially an external SSD, it can be very efficient. And for many of you out there, you're probably reading articles, you're probably watching videos of like, wow, I, you know, this is really efficient because Windows 10 and even Mac OS, a lot of times you can just run the application right on the external drive. And again, I'm aware you can literally load up, so boot from and run an entire operating system from an external SSD. So I get it. However, for those of you that are saying to me or asking me like, all right, well, you've talked about upgrading the RAM and I realize for the M1, the RAM is, is more efficient. And so when it's all on the chip, the CPU, the GPU, and the RAM, there is more efficiency there. But for that longer lifespan, that longevity out of your machine, especially if you're doing intensive tasks from a creative standpoint, and of course, I'll talk about students and of course, the business work as well. But if you're doing anything really intensive, I do recommend upgrading the RAM. But you've also asked, okay, but what about the base storage? Will I get away with at least you know, just the 256 gigs of storage. And of course, that is subjective to what you, you're going to need. And you've said, well, I've seen this or read this, like I can just run most of the software on the external drive and I'd be good to go. And in theory, yes. But when we actually talk about the application itself and thinking like, how cool, how easy is it like when I download this application and especially in Mac OS, where you can literally create an application folder within this SSD and you download that application and that executable file and you can just drag it over to an applications folder and having it run off the external, that's pretty cool. So not getting too deep in the weeds when we talk about the library and the executable files, the one thing that we need to consider, whether it's Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, is that there is a static library, a statically linked library, and then there's also the dynamically linked library. Now, with the static library, the, the benefit of that is obviously that everything is contained in one. So the executable file, the library, and all of those subroutines that are gonna be happening, so everything is being called upon within that static environment, to, base, to put it simply. And again, I will link up some resources to help you out. Now, from my dynamic library, and specifically for Mac OS, there are some efficiencies there because what it also does is that not everything is contained within that file or within that application in that it shares those libraries. It can share code in those libraries to basically create some efficiency when it comes to internal storage on, on the drive itself and even the RAM utilization because some of these applications can just sort of sit idle and then when you ask it to do something, when there's a command or some code that it needs to grab or to do something, then it can actually pull that up when it needs to pull it up. And again, share some of those resources among the applications. However, again, the downfall being that if you up, update the, the application or the software, there's no real guarantee that the library itself gets updated as well. Cause again, it's a shared system, although it, it's, it's still pretty efficient. The efficiency, whether it is Windows or Mac OS, being able to keep the software itself, keeping it simple on the internal drive, but being able to set your media storage, so your backups and the lion's share of that information to be able to be put on an external drive can actually be the way to go. 
So let's actually look at it from like even a, a situation where a crash can occur. So in Final Cut Pro, as an example, I've tried intentionally to crash that program on the M1 and it's very hard to do. But the fact that it's hosted and hanging out on the internal storage of, of the Mac, and of course Mac is really good at auto saving a lot of things, but I can tell you the years that I have edited on an external drive, but kept the software on the internal, anytime it has crashed, I come right back up and I'm working where I basically left off, basically where that crash has happened because it quickly links up the SIM links, link up to the media, and I get back to work. Whereas I would be concerned if you kept your application on the external drive and it becomes unplugged accidentally and it just spontaneously ejects. I'm not saying like, you know, that you can't re like resume where you were, but the chances of anything getting corrupted or lost or whatever, I think that actually can increase. Not to mention the redundancies that can occur. Because if you're keeping everything on the external drive and then asking the system to also create libraries and subroutines and all of these tasks, you may actually create duplicate files and duplicate backups. And you don't even know that's happening because you can go into the application support of the, the, the user, like specifically on Mac OS and look and see like, okay, I can right click or, or get info on some of these to show that the application itself might take up three gigs and then there's also some additional backups that may occur, but they're not really significant because again, it's about those folders that are hosting all of your media, all of your spreadsheets or whatever it is that you're working on, keeping it on the external SSD. So like I said, if you're finding that you're running out of storage, you really need to think about where you're storing that information. Now, really getting back to your buying decision and whether you should actually upgrade or double that storage, Here's the thing, so it's subjective, and so we have to kind of break this down a little bit. And you've also probably heard terms like the memory swap. Well, here's the thing, folks. Memory swap is not new to M1. The way that the RAM is utilized and the way that it functions on this chip is very efficient. I think eight gigs functions more like 16, 16 more like 32. I've said that in a previous video, but that's for another video entirely. So what I wanna say, though, is that even though this is not a new phenomenon where if the, the RAM is getting pressured and you need something, a, a resource or something to happen with a certain application, and what it will do is actually swap that and throw some of that task on the internal drive to say like, all right, well, we don't, like that'll just sit there on the drive because we need the RAM to function for this task that this person is asking us to do as if there's like little people inside of the computer, like saying, I mean, basically there is an exchange that is happening with the internal storage. So that being said, and again, not a new phenomenon, that is also something to think about, especially if you're getting the base model, like so eight gigs of RAM, because your memory may get utilized more quickly and get pressured more often. And so you may have to increase your swap memory on the internal drive. So having that buffer is going to be helpful, regardless of whether you're on Mac OS or even Windows or Linux. Being able to go into the application and see like, okay, well, you know what, DaVinci's not really taking up that much space, just under three gigs, and Final Cut Pro just under four gigs, and then kind of working down the line of Photoshop or Lightroom or any of the programs that you're using. So you can see, like when you look at the info, that it's really not taking up a ton of space. So if you're starting to run out of space and you don't have like 100 programs on your drive, then really what you need to look at is like, okay, I have the ability to go into Final Cut Pro or DaVinci Resolve. And, and let's actually, I've talked up a lot about Final Cut Pro, but DaVinci Resolve, going into DaVinci Resolve, opening a project, then going into preferences, and then going into where we actually are gonna have our media stored, such as creating this as our media storage. So that way, like when I'm working on the files, the system itself is utilizing, like it's taking care of the software aspects and the media is linked up here. This is actually where all of that is going to be stored and where you're working. So the internal drive doesn't, it just is creating addresses and avenues to say like, oh yeah, we just need to pull that in, working on it, but it's, it's really hanging out on this, this drive. So that's where the efficiency can come in. Now, for those of you that have asked about gaming and of course, specifically gaming on an external SSD, which I'm still testing this OWC, 
and I've gamed on it and it's pretty cool. Now for the Windows users, I understand there's a ton of excitement about M1 and being able to game on it, but is it really a gaming machine? It's just exciting for the consumer of what's to come in the near future for both operating systems. But that being said, I utilize Steam. Now Steam with the application itself, the software, being able to keep it on the internal drive, that's not really that much of an issue because it doesn't take up that much space. And if you actually go to Steam, you can select the media library from the downloads. However, going deeper, go to the home in the Steam app and then find your game over on the left, click the properties, then local, and then move. So basically you're moving that over to the external drive. And then of course, when you try to open it up, once that happens, you try to open it up, it's gonna ask you if it can access this external uh, drive. And then of course, like, you know, just click okay. It might take a second because initially it's just trying to compile all of that. But once you get going, it's actually pretty efficient. And of course, being able to play Shadow of the Tomb Raider on this external SSD at a respectable 30 frames per second. And for those of you that are heavy into gaming, thinking like, that's nothing. We have to realize, as I said in my other testing, is that this thing is not even optimized for Mac in general, but especially the M1, not like World of Warcraft. So that being said, being able to connect this and run this off the SSD, and for testing purposes, I did play it for at least a couple of hours over and over again, just so that I could at least make sure that it was all good. But that being said, the lion's share of that lifting is happening within the graphics and the CPU, and that graphics definitely getting pushed between 75% and even almost close to maxing out in certain you know, aspects. But having the fan in the mini certainly helps, but the SSD remained fine. Any bottleneck that would occur would be from the connection to the computer, so through the Thunderbolt 3, and this is USB-C. This isn't even a Thunderbolt 3 enclosure, which I do have, so for those of you that are asking, I do have that. But what I wanna say is the read and write and being able to game for hours on it, it's been fine. So at the end of the day, if you want to do some pretty intensive tasks on your device, you could likely continue to do that on the SSD, but I would just encourage you, if you seriously are looking at longevity and you are thinking about programs down the road that may take up a lot of space or be very uh, resource intensive, to double think, to just double check whether it would be efficient to be running it off of the external SSD rather than just keeping it on the internal, keeping it simple and keeping all of the backups and all of the media and all of the stuff that's just gonna clog up your internal anyway on the external SSD. All right, so as I always say, hit me up in the comment section below and of course the community, please help each other out. Hit me up over on Twitter, we can have conversations over there. And as I always say, go do those things that matter Keep rocking the faces. I'm gonna to try to keep informing you to make better buying decisions. So you go do the things and I'll catch you right back here on the next one.